Item 4.0, Business and Financial. Uh, furthermore, item 4.1, Interview Prospective Appointees. It's recommended the board interview prospective board member appointees. I have a motion. Move. A second. Call the question. Aye. 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 Um, right just before we get started, and I turn it over to, um, to Mr. King to, to lay some of the ground rules. Um, I'd like to take a quick moment, the President and I get to do that sometimes, um, and thank the candidates. It's terrific that we have three candidates, uh, three good candidates. Um, only one of you will go home selected tonight, but I hope that the other two um, think hard about coming forward again. Um, None of us gets paid to do this. We do it because it's a, it's a sort of calling to try to take our skills uh, and any gifts we might have and make a nice place even better to live. And so for those of you who don't make it tonight, please come back. You, I'll even invite you to run against me. Um, the candidate pool is really good. All right. Um, Mr. King, would you like to go through some of the sure, process? Sure. Just a couple pieces to, so everybody understands the process and it's real transparent. So the, the candidates will be called up in alphabetical order, which is at the, the discretion of staff. And so that's how I decided to do that, my last name. So Castan, uh, uh, and then um, uh, Jensen, and then Wessel. So that's the order that will proceed in as far as the interviews go and then there'll be 10 minutes apiece um, and so our uh, timer this evening will be Vice President Mr. Porter uh, will time those electronically as we're required to do um, at the conclusion of each interview you are welcome to stay in the public setting or leave it's uh, totally your option as to what you'd like to do at the conclusion of your particular interview um, after the final interview uh, public Comments are welcome and solicited and heard. Uh, we have three yellow cards, I believe, at this time. If you decide that you'd like to fill one out and make a comment, you are welcome to. Uh, deliberation and discussion takes place in public following the public comments. So we'll, we'll have the deliberation and open discussion in public following uh, public input. Uh, each board member may state uh, his opinion. Uh, in preference for one or more of the candidates. You may elaborate on the preferences, but should limit your comments probably to a few minutes. Um, after all members have stated their preferences, the board president asks for a motion to appoint a candidate. If a motion is seconded, the president calls for discussion and then the board votes. If a motion carries by a majority vote, the candidate is appointed. If there is no second or the motion does not carry, then the board, the board president asks for another motion and the process is repeated until the candidate is finally appointed. Okay, so that's the, the process. The taking of the oath will take place on Thursday the 14th. So, okay. And that's it. Mr. King, can you also say the time of taking the oath on, the, on Thursday? The, sure, so just to lay that out a little bit. So 6.30, which is unusual, we're going to have a uh, kind of our larger public piece at 6.30 so that we can honor uh, Mr. DeStasso at this time in his service on, on the board. And from there, we will go to a brief recess and um, celebrate, have some cake together, and uh, punch and coffee. And then um, at that point, then we will do the oath of a new person, and uh, that, that person will then take their seat, and we will then go into closed session. At the, and the closed session so would approximately be 7.15. Okay. So uh, as we get started, and uh, if we go off the rails, please. Sure. Interject. No. All right. So then that means we'll be starting with uh, Ms. Costin. Okay. And uh, we're going to start the... Let you get. And the time is 10 minutes each, correct? Correct. Each individual, not just each, each candidate. candidate. Thank goodness. Okay. <laughs> there are eight questions. Okay. Go ahead and start. Ms. Gosson, what do you see as the basic purpose of the public schools? 
What is the role of the Board of, Trust, of, the Board of Trustees in the fulfillment of that purpose? Um, I believe the basic purpose is to offer students the best possible education with the resources that we have available to us. Um, the role would be to make sure that what we've implemented as far as resource and curriculum um, are indeed being fulfilled by the staff on, on site and uphold that. Uh, what are you proud of in this district? What would you like to accomplish as a board member? Which is your highest priority and why? Um, I'm very proud of the fact that uh, all of our schools have been enhanced in the, fa in the past few years. Um, also that we have now a choice uh, for a charter school in Abu Dhabi. That's always great for the kids that don't fit in the public school setting. Um, what I would like to accomplish is seeing the fruition of the Safe Routes to School that I initiated, um, tried to initiate last year, now is merely apparent. Um, I would like to continue the choice for charter in the community, whether it's a current charter or a different charter in Abu Dhabi, and definitely um, continue the vision of your fiscal plan, your five-year plan is important to achieve these things. My highest priority would be uh, to ensure that we keep that vision for the fiscal plan because without that we can't do the other things. So. Thank you. The third question, uh, as a trustee, what do you see as your primary purpose and primary role? So um, this is a little different than the last question. Mm -hmm. As a trustee, what do you see as your primary purpose or primary role? How would you fulfill that role both as an individual and, in, and as a member of the governing board? Um, I believe the primary purpose is to uphold the policies of the district um, for what's best for the community and our schools. Um, it's important both as a board member and an individual to engage parents and staff. Um, to attend the meetings, of course, regularly and ask questions um, on reports and, and things that are presented to us. Uh, it's important to attend venues, school venues, community venues, to get um, engaged with the parents and have them put a face to the name on the website. And uh, it's important for them to feel that they have a board that's working with them. And that takes a lot of networking and a lot of time that I'm, with, I'm willing to uh, put that time into it, it's important. Excellent, thank you. And the fourth question. Describe a good board meeting. What are the objectives of a good board meeting? I think prior to the board meeting, it's important to uh, review the documents that you're given, uh, email prior to the board meeting, make sure that you're prepared so that you can ask the right questions of staff since there's so many different documents that are put in front of you, whether it's um, map testing or financials, it's important to be prepared prior to the meeting. And um, it's also important, the few times that parents do decide to attend a meeting during public comments to really listen to what they're saying and follow through with the solution with whatever that problem may be. Ken? Thank you. What would you do if you believed administrators had not provided you with accurate and complete information for making a decision? Um, I would give them a chance to produce the accurate information before uh, voting on an item on the agenda, maybe having to table it till the next meeting. Depending on how important that item is, it's very important that we understand what's put in front of us and if we have questions to ask those questions, but if it's not a complete report, I think it's important to give them a chance to produce it so that we can make a, a good decision. Thank you. Please summarize the strengths you would bring as a member of the board. Um, I believe I've gained some knowledge and experience serving on the board that I serve now. And I believe it's important um, to have the time to put in to the board, not just showing up at meetings, but the other things I've mentioned, attending venues, getting to know parents. 
I have networking skills and the liaison for our school and the district in various ways at the moment. And that's very important because there's a lot of choice out there for schools. We want to keep our parents happy. Thank you, Larry. Number seven, what is your view of school choice for the parents and students who live in our community? Well, I think it's wonderful that we have choice now uh, with the charter school in Abu Um I'm also very proud of the fact that our schools in Acton have also enhanced their curriculum and they're able to have resources now for all of the students. And depending on um, what happens with Abu Dulce and the charter school, it would be great to continue that charter choice. Number eight is, are you willing to resign from any conflicting currently held board position? Yes, I am. And I will do that, and my board knows that that might be a possibility. Thank you very much. Okay, next in alphabetical order is Ms. Jensen. Good evening, board members and President Fox and Superintendent Kane. Thank you, Wanda. Thank you for having me this evening. Thanks for, for uh, a lot. Question one, what do you see as the basic purpose of public schools? What's the role of the Board of Trustees in the fulfillment of that purpose? Well, <clears throat> first of all, I think public education is the backbone, not just of our community, but the backbone of our nation. Um, we need to provide, the basic purpose is to provide equity and access for all students to become lifelong learners, to become productive um, members of society. Um, we have the responsibility to make sure our students are prepared for college and beyond, no matter what path they want to take, and um, just become great global citizens. And what was the second part you want? Uh, uh, what is the role of the Board of Trustees in fulfillment of that purpose? We want to create a long-term vision, and we want to make sure that the priorities of the district, um, that we have the correct resources that we need to help students make their, meet their full potential. And also, we want to make sure that um, in fulfillment of that purpose, that we are reviewing data, and we're evaluating the progress, and implementing that vision. Oftentimes, <coughs> when we talk about, um, never mind, oh, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Porter? Oh, I'm sorry. You have number two. That's number two. Um, what are you proud of in this district? What would you like to accomplish as a board member? Uh, what's your highest priority and why? No. <clears throat> First, I'm going to take you back to 2000. You can tell me the reading glasses. I've been a longtime um, community member for 17 years. My student, my kids were students in the year 2000. So um, that's when we moved here. And so, what I'm proud of is that my I have adult children on a personal level that are productive citizens. They have great careers. They're great parents now, and they are products of the back to not with LC school district. Also, I come from a time when we used to, have, used to have to hike up a hill with lawn chairs and pray that we didn't roll down the hill to go to football games. So that's something else that I'm very proud of. I actually, um, I'm proud, I work in Palmdale. I'm proud that people no longer will say to me, oh, your kids went to that district with that barn looking thing. Um, it makes me proud to see that this, that we have a beautiful school and a beautiful s facility. So that is one thing that I'm extremely proud of, not as just a parent and an educator, but also just as a member of our community. So I would like to thank you for that. We also have great test scores. I mean, we have some improvements to be made. We should constantly be making improvements. But also, just the little things. Like, I was thrilled to see that the, we're going to have our kids perform bells at the Dorothy Channel Pavilion. That's another great thing. But one thing that I'm, most, um, I'm also proud of is um, being from being on a teacher perspective, I hope that our community realizes that in a time when there's a teacher shortage, not just in the state of California, but across the nation, that we were able to have 100% of our teachers highly qualified. That's what's great for our kids. And so you cannot produce great students without great teachers. The most important thing to our classroom are the classroom teachers. So 
that is something that, that we should be really proud of as a community is having, making sure that we have highly qualified teachers in our classroom. And we have to make sure that whatever's happening at the elementary level can go up to the high school level. We have a high graduation rate. We need to be really proud of that as well. Uh, my highest priority would be that just to make sure that we have safe schools for our students, that are we're giving our students a rigorous educational program, and that we want to make sure we're cons consistently evaluating. You talk about mission and goals oftentimes, and they're kind of broad. We want to make sure that we are narrowing down the focus so that we can make sure that we're making those little, those little gains all the time. <clears throat> As a trustee, what do you see as your primary purpose or primary role? How would you fulfill that role, both as an individual and as a member of the governing board? So what do you see your, as your role and how would you fulfill that? Well, first of all, I want input from student, mem uh, student members, from community stakeholders, teachers, and classified staff. It's important that we don't forget our classified staff. That happens often. I'd like to collaborate to improve the vision of and the work of the district, and my role would be to support the superintendent, our um, different school communities, to make sure we're accomplishing that goal. As, a, as an individual, I would have to make sure that I'm, I'm studying current data, things that are happening, make sure that I'm really um, listening, and as, and as a board member, on an individual, I would make sure I was just studying and staying up to date on current things. And as a board member, I have to make sure that I'm open-minded. I am an educator, so it would be important for me just to make sure that I'm not just in my world, that I'm listening to everybody else, I'm being a team player, that I'm being listening to the community and um, being open-minded. Um, uh, Mr. King, are we allowed to ask clarifying questions? or? I would time. <coughs> I, I caution the board too that you want to stay with the same set of yeah. questions. Yeah, let's not waste I, time. I'm having a hard time knowing where I am on the time because I don't see. You're any. you're you're okay. You're okay. at five minutes. You're at five okay. minutes, uh, and we're in. I, I paused it because of. Okay. We're at number four, Mr. Board, and we're halfway through. All right. Okay. So and we paused the time while we were okay. just. To, okay. So you're just just shy. So I think, you know, just listening just to just, over uh, okay. I mean, finishing, Penny, just making sure I'm listening to different perspectives. Yeah. You got it. Thank you very much. Okay. I, I got you. Okay. Number four, um, describe a good board meeting. What are the objectives of a good board meeting? Well, I think a good meeting, a good board meeting is about students. Uh, my favorite board meetings, I have the opportunity to, to attend several board meetings. And my favorite are when we see student performances when we're um, seeing and seeing how our students are doing. I love the video that we saw a couple weeks ago of the students doing science. I think that's important just to make sure that it, it is about um, student-centered and that we're getting input from our community, that we're making sure that um, as we're having board meetings that we're making sure our community is well informed. I think it's important to have study sessions so that um, you're seeing giving people opportunity to make you well informed about certain um, issues. And um, I think it's important to make sure you're following the agenda and, and having some good discussions about much. education. Ken? What would you do if you believed administrators had not provided you with accurate and complete information for making a decision? Well, I think it's important that you have everything you need to make sure you're making a good, solid decision. I mean, when we're talking about students, we need to make sure we're doing the right thing. So I would contact Mr. King and I would explain to him what I would need to make that decision to make sure that I had the information that I needed, I would explain what I needed, and then I would let him know so that he could provide me with the, that information and then provide it with the, um, by board, the other board members as well so we all had the information. Thank you. Please summarize the strengths you would bring as a member of the board. Well, first of all, I'm fully committed to education. Um, it provides opportunity for, for the future. Um, I've been committed to a public education for 13 years. I've served as, a, um, first of all, a classroom teacher. And I always say that I'm a, a teacher, number one, even though I'm an administrator, because I think that's the number one thing for students. I've also been an instructional coach. 
Um, there's actually some other things, but instructional coach is something that you can um, that is under people can understand what I've done, which means I work with uh, provided professional development. I worked with um, students with um, with the needed support, um, needed extra response to intervention. Um, I've been an assistant principal for a K a K six and also a six a seven eight um, middle school. I've been a principal of a low performing um, student. My ADA was about 725, 715, 725. And I um, currently serve in the Pomelo School District as director of curriculum and instruction. This is like my third year doing that. Um, so education is continually changing. As you know as board members, you constantly have to be changing. So I think it's um, important that we are all life learners and um, modeling continuous learning for, for everyone. Um, and as a parent, I've also been a parent in this um, district. I'm old now, I'm a grandma, but that's okay. I, I love my, my kids. And um, I volunteered in classrooms. I've served as a PTO member or PTA member, and I've also helped with different activities and school activities. <coughs> Number seven, what is your view of school choice for parents and students who live in our community? Well, schools are different in today's world. And no more of the days where you moved in, you asked your realtor, what school do I go to? And you just went to the school that you uh, were, were given. Um, so there's lots of choices between you know charters, we have public schools, we have many people in our community that homeschool as well. So there's, so there's lots of choice. Um, our responsibility is to keep our um, parents informed and um, we have the responsibility to make sure no matter what our parents choose that our schools uh, are, are doing great and that we are um, keeping them informed. I can tell you that my current position, um, we do have charter schools and I'm on an oversight committee and I've seen some <coughs> charter schools that are excellent, wonderful places to go and I've seen some that their charter describes certain things, and I don't see that happening. I don't think that they're providing students with the best education. So there's a different, I've seen many charter schools, I've been in many classrooms, and so my view is that they don't, people need to stay well informed about charter schools because they have to do that. Okay. We have about 30 seconds for the last question. All right. Shoot with the last question. Right? Number eight, are you willing to resign from any conflicting, currently held board positions? Um, I don't have any conflicting responsibilities, but yes, I would be, but I don't have any. Thank you. 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 I'm ready. <coughs> okay. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Thank you. All right. First question for you. What do you see as the basic purpose of the public schools? What is the role of the Board of Trustees in the fulfillment of that purpose? Okay. Well, um, you know, the biggest thing uh, that I see is to provide an education, uh, but both academically and socially. Um, it uh, clearly, uh, you know, going up through the different uh, levels of from elementary out through um, in preparation for college, um, there's a lot of learning that has to go on. And that learning has to be, you know, it's what's taught by the teachers, but the, the, the social education, learning how to be a real person. And um, the board, you know, the board needs to provide that structure um, and the resources. So not only, um, you know, the, the safe environment, the um, uh, the knowledge and in, in, in teaching of the kids of, of what that is, um, all of that uh, you know goes goes you know, way beyond just the academics. But the academics obviously is is extremely important part by you know um, uh, making sure that the board you know gets good teachers you know and has the the resources to do what they need to do. Um, what are you proud of in this district? What would you like to accomplish as a board member? Which is your highest priority and why? Well, um, you know, my thing that, uh, that I'm most proud of is the fact that uh, this whole district has come a long ways over the past several years. Um, my kids 
you know, started in elementary school, now they're in high school. Uh, one's a sophomore, one's a senior. Um, so I've been around a while, and, and I've seen the growth, and I'm really, really proud of, of where we've made it to date. Um, as far as uh, highest priority, you know, that, that's a tough one, because you know, there's a lot of things that are, that are priority, but you know, in general, you know, I want to be a part of the team that makes this thing grow. Okay, we're heading in the right direction. I really, you know, believe that. Um, but I think there's more things that we can do. And priorities for me <clears throat> um, is I, I'd like to see some of the um, uh, different, different uh, additional, different programs and things like that. Um, I mean, we've got some great programs now. Don't get me wrong. Um, uh, Mr. Jensen talked about the, the handbells. You know, my daughter's a part of that. You know, it's. Uh, so the teachers that we have just <clears throat> are phenomenal, and they really um, uh, go that extra mile. But there's uh, other things that are out there. I know you guys are working on a, uh, on a welding truck for a vocational um, uh, situation. Um, there's some other things like that that um, you know uh, I think that we can grow, and we, we'll talk about some of those as we go on here. But get ahead of myself. Number three, as a trustee, what do you see as your primary purpose or primary role? How would you feel, how would you fulfill that role, both as an individual and as a member of the governing board? Okay, well, again, <clears throat> um, to continue to grow our structure and our resources, um, you know, making sure that, that we have the, um, and, and grow the, the, uh, the resources, the, the, the uh, programs, all those kinds of things. I think that's a um, making sure that the the whole uh, district is going in the right direction. Um, obviously, there's a lot of things that um, you know, as uh, as a role of the board, you know, we, we have budget constraints, things like that that we've got to worry about. Um, but there may be other ways that we can look at for bringing funds into the district. Um, you know, and we'll, I can talk about some of those things that I think that primarily that I can help with, but um, um, it's, uh, uh, you know, from a financial point of view, um, you know, I've got a, a big history in, in, in budgets and in dollars and cents and, and raising money, especially, uh, you know, nonprofits and, and, and school boards would fall under that. Um, you know, in the past few years, I've, I've done, uh, written grants, I'm a grant writer. Um, I received over $1.5 million in grants for the programs that, that I've worked for in the past. Uh, so, uh, you know, I like to think outside the box. I like to, you know, make sure that uh, we find not only the traditional ways, but maybe some non-traditional ways of, 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 you know, doing that. And that's some of the things that I can bring to the table um, as, a, as a board member. Personally, um, I'm involved in a lot of uh, support at the event levels and things like that. Um, and, and I think it's a, uh, really important for board members to be involved at that level so they can understand what's going on and be able to help the kids, you know, at, at the different events of you know, fall festivals to, you know, my daughter's playing basketball too, so, you know, providing all the things that they need. But you know, whatever it is, on a personal level, I, I want to make sure I give back to the, to the kids. That's what it's all about. Thank you. Um, describe a good board meeting. And uh, to you, what are the objectives of a good board meeting? Okay, well, um, a good board meeting is, is one where um, everyone gets to make their point. You know, I'm talking about public and, and everybody here. Um, uh, I've been to a, quite a few board meetings and none of you guys are shy. Um, uh, but we'll make sure that all these things uh, um, um, are discussed, discussed, you know, uh, uh, properly, we have all the input that we need, um, and uh, be able to make the, those decisions based on, on good input. Um, the objectives are basically simple enough to, to learn the facts, hopefully in advance. If not, we learn some of those here. Um, uh, again, um, the objective would be to confer with it amongst ourselves and, and make an informed decision. That's really the bottom line. Mr. Falls, go ahead. What would you do if you believed administrators had not provided you with accurate and complete information for making a decision? 
Well, um, if you don't have the facts, I don't see how you can make a decision. It's uh, important that, that you get the facts. And if you get to this point where we're in the middle of a board meeting, and you feel you don't have the facts to be able to make a good decision, a decision shouldn't be made. And I'd be arguing to the point that, that you know, that, that decision gets postponed until such time um, that you do have the facts. Okay. Please summarize the strengths you would bring as a member of the board. Well, you know, uh, I've got a pretty well-rounded, uh, um, not only education, but, you know, real-life education, if you will. Um, I've got an a extremely good understanding of budgets and, and whatnot. I manage uh, commercial HOAs. I deal with um, budgets of, of millions of dollars. Um, so, you know, I understand what happens there. I've done, um, uh, I, through my, I, I do property management to, to, at, at all levels. And um, so I do a lot of uh, maintenance. I do a lot of um, building. I've, I've built buildings from the ground up. I've done, um, you know, torn things down from the top down. But um, so I've got a, a good understanding of what it takes um, and, and potential pitfalls, if you will, um, you know, as we, as the board is, is, is even now, an, a, uh, moving forward with, with several projects that I would love to be a part of. Um, I already talked about, uh, uh, I am on a board now uh, for a 501c3 nonprofit. Uh, I've been the chief financial officer for, for many, many years. Um, uh, here's a volunteer. I've been a volunteer for a long, long time. Um, i be more happy to go through in details if anybody has it. Uh, um, I've received a, an award from um, uh, President Barack Obama, if you'd like to see, I have a letter here, the uh, Lifetime Achievement Award for Volunteerism. Um, you know, uh, um, you know uh, I'm an Eagle Scout, so that tells you that whatever I start, I'm going to finish. Okay, and I'm uh, running out of time, so I'll stop there. Thank you. Thank you, Barry. Barry. Number seven, what is your view of school choice for parents and students who live in our community? Well. Um, how I feel is that it's all about the kids, okay? Um, parents should be able to make the choice. Uh, they should be able to, you know, um, do what they think is best for the kids. At the same time, I think it's our responsibility to um, show to the parents and to the people that live in our community that we have the best solution. I think that's our job as a board. I think that's our job as a district. So if we, um, you know, we're competing just like anybody else, and make them want to come to us, but they should have a choice. And number eight, are you willing to resign from any conflicting currently held board position? I, I, I don't think I have a, any conflicting board position, but if you had a, a concern with that, um, uh, I would have no problem resigning my, my, my uh, position with the other board. Uh, I've been there for 23 years. Um, but, you know, this is more important. It's all about the kids. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think we have a couple uh, cards just to the public input. It's time for cards. We'll, we'll do those in uh, Mr. Houseman. Uh, the mayor requested once we go through that, we get a chance to maybe review the list. I know you had to work and we didn't have it. I, this is the first time I've seen the application, so if you could maybe just go through them for before we do the nominations, just to, I know people take a long time and a lot of work. normally happens after these questions? So after the questions, the board would have dialogue, okay. which could include your review. Perhaps the occasion, perhaps take a recess. Five or ten minutes yeah. recess. Sure. I would appreciate that. You can do that. Okay. All right. Um, in last name or alphabetical order, I've got a comment card for Miss Ayer. Jackie? Okay, thank you very much. And, um, I, it's a three minute rule? Yes. Yeah. Just state your name for a record. Yes, uh, my name is Jacqueline Ayer, and I'm here, and thank you very much for this opportunity because this is a very important issue, obviously, for our school district and our community. Um, I'm here because I wanted to mention that this school board, as you know, has a, a long-term vision. It was about a couple of years ago, uh, a five-year plan. Uh, and um, it has six elements, but I'm just going to focus on two. And the reason I'm here, and I'm 
speaking on this issue is because I would like to urge you to appoint a candidate that's going to further the elements of this five-year plan, which this community supported some two years ago when it was adopted. Um, so I'm going to focus on two issues, the first being, in my mind, the highest priority. I ask you respectfully to please select a candidate that is going to pursue the Safe Routes to School program because the safety of our kids is high, uh, high, high, high priority for all of us, and we all recognize that. Um, and I've been, obviously you all know, working on that for about a year and a half when the school district first stepped in that direction. And that is item number two of your five-year plan. So um, I urge you to please select a candidate who's going to take the bit in their teeth and run on that and sort of um, help coordinate with the town council and other members of the community who are concerned about this. And all your candidates sound wonderful, but I, I want to make sure that you all understand how important this is, at least for me as a parent with a child in this school, and also as a member of the town council. I'm not here representing them tonight, but I have before before this board. The second issue I would like to um, identify tonight and urge you to select a candidate that would pursue this course of action or pursue this element also is we have an opportunity right now with the County Parks Department to acquire not only the 15% funds that were guaranteed under Measure A, but if we invest in certain types of recreational facilities such as a pool, um, um, we have an opportunity to actually get substantially more funding than the minimum allocation that has been granted to our community through the Measure A, uh, regulate, or, uh, uh, Measure A, whatever, bond, bond measure. Um, and I've been, am I out of time? No, no, it's when you're correct. In oh, okay. I've attended all of the county uh, park reg, uh, meetings and actually had a long meeting with the county staff on this about six weeks ago. Um, and they said absolutely there is nothing that would prevent a sort of joint funding program for facilities. I'm just saying it poor because that was the issue that came through in their Measure A report for active was one of the highest priority items was a pool and I understand that our swim team here in the high school has to go down to these day. So anyway, I ask you to please select a, a, a candidate that will pursue that and take that um, through to, to hopefully a good conclusion. So thank you. Thank you, Jackie. Uh, Ms. Trussell, state your name for the record in 30 minutes when to start talking. I prepared a quick statement. Um, my name is Melissa Trussell, and as many of you know, I wear several hats, but tonight I speak as a parent, an educator, and a constituent of the district. Um, I would like to ask the Board of Trustees to consider the following when making your decision this evening to appoint a new board member to the position. One, a, a trustee with a background in education and the innate drive to truly put students first. Two, a trustee that reads and educates themselves rigorously to better participate in board here, uh, meetings and proceedings. Three, a trustee that understands the pinnacle role teachers and classified staff play in the inner workings of the institution and that they are truly the backbone uh, and the support for our students firsthand. So that if the occasion arises, the trustee understands and appreciates that should cutbacks be made, they are as far away from our students as possible. Four, um, please consider a trustee who takes every decision, uh, sorry, excuse me, a, a trustee who considers every decision for its impact on our students and that includes uh, students that live in our district and those that also attend our charters. And lastly, a trustee that recognizes that it is in the best interest of the students and the district to attract and retain highly qualified teachers and base that on competitive salaries and health and welfare contributions to our teachers. Thank you for your time. And if there are no other cards, President, I'd like to bring a point of order that, to clear up so that I don't have a misunderstanding because I do believe I have a misunderstanding. Is this the proper time to bring it up? 
a point of order question yeah. of how we're moving forward? Yes. Okay. Wow. Uh, my problem with this is that I see three good people. I would vote for any one of them and every one of them. But what we're supposed to be figuring out is, is there one of them that all four of us would vote for? And is there maybe one of them that three of us would vote for? And, or is there two of them that three of us would vote for? We're not looking for any that two of us would vote for. My problem with the way it was explained by Mr. King is that if somebody makes a motion to have an appointment and there's two votes and it's Two, three votes, two, two plus the nomination after a second, that person is now on the board and we may have voted just because that's a person is our second best choice. And so... Somebody else might get four, you're saying. I, I'm saying I, I think the, the election uh, procedure that you have described is inherently flawed. Uh, I think we have to figure out if there is one of these three candidates that all four of us want. And that's not going to happen if I say, I want to nominate somebody. And, I second. and you second it. And it's candidate A. And now four of us make a decision. The two of us have probably already decided. And now a third one says something and it's a, and, and it's done and over with but yet in my opinion fairness has not prevailed so let me clarify a couple of things that, that I um, unless we sandbag votes and, and vote over and over so which we did that one time the, the first piece let me, let me clarify the first piece that mr. Fox brought up earlier which is to review the application so so other than I think mr. Porter brought it up so we could review, but it needs to be in public. So there will be yeah. no discussion during that time. It can take five or ten minutes. You can review your paperwork, your applications. Right, right here. Right here. Right here. Yeah, right without, without because we don't have a post to close session, yeah, we so can't. I agree. Okay. So that's the first piece. The second piece is, I think inherently in any process that's, and you're familiar with this and with your legal background, Mr. Lane, is that we inherit what's written in the law. So until the law changes, this is this is the process we're, you know, quote, married to. So I think by default, if somebody made a motion for candidate A and there was no second well, before you go there, sure. there will be a period of discussion just like there is before any vote. Correct. Where we share right. our thoughts and concerns. Not concerns. Our thoughts and opinions with one another. Um, to learn what the other is thinking. I mean, I'm certainly with such good candidates. I'm hope, I'm looking forward to that period of discussion. And so that, that might cure that. It. That, that in and of itself may lead to some sense of consensus that would yeah, let me perhaps read, drive. Good I think thinking. you're exactly right. Let me read this again because I think I think you're exactly right, Mr. Fox. So after the final interview, public comments are solicited and heard. So we've been through that piece. Uh, public comments. So deliberation discussion takes place in the public. Following public comments, each board member may state his or her preference for one or more candidates. They may elaborate on their preferences, but should limit their comments to a few minutes. After all members have stated their preferences, the board president asks for a motion to appoint a candidate. So I mean, just to echo your remarks, they're spot on, and so you would have a discussion first about the preferences, why, support, justify, clarify. So we may choose not to second based on what we've heard, we may choose to weigh those types of things. Correct. Okay. okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So having said that, um, let's all sit quietly for five or ten minutes and let Mr. Um, Porter uh, review the application. Without discussion. <coughs> I'm ready to go forward. Yeah. I'll okay, me too. If any uh, board members have any discussion, I'm going to uh, sit back and, and listen, frankly, because uh, of the quality of the candidates before I express any opinions. Anybody care to start? Well, first off, when I went through this, um, myself and the other candidate actually uh, were excused. Now, 
you're welcome to be here, I think. I just want to make sure we're still doing it. Okay. So, <laughs> as awkward as it may be, I'm, I'm glad you're we'll still here. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. May I start, Mr. President? Please. Would you like to go ahead? You. Be my guest. <laughs> <laughs> you good, Ken? Go ahead. Oh, I think we're, we're very blessed to have the different candidates. I mean, it's a great testament to the um, caliber of our residents in our community. And uh, um, I know all three individuals. And uh, I think that uh, um, all three have shown a great deal of uh, altruism and volunteerism. And uh, we're, happy, we're very happy to have all three of you. Um, uh, Mr. Wessel, your, your son, and uh, is one of the nicest kids I've ever known. I couldn't Thank say you. enough about him. Thomas, uh, he's a senior in high school. He's, you know, for full disclosure, he's one of my son's best friends, and they have, um, they, you know, he is one of the most humble and the greatest sense of humor, just one of the kindest kids that I know. So my hat is off to you for raising such a great kid. Thank you. We're very lucky to have him. Um, um, Mrs. Costan, uh, I appreciate everything that you've done as a partner to our board on the Einstein uh, board. I think uh, uh, from everything I've heard, you've been a great asset to that board, and I appreciate you putting your hat in the ring. And um, Ms. Jensen, I think that uh, you know your your experience and your commitment to education speaks for itself. Um, my grandparents raised me; they were both teachers. And uh, I can certainly spot uh, the type of commitment that you have displayed, uh, um, you know, in, in your application and your interview. So I'm just very happy with everyone um, that applied. The way that I approached this is um, I sat in that seat in 08 and went through this process, and we had something similar to what Mr. Layton suggested, and it was a grueling process. There were eight of us. One of the applicants was a, um, a lady that was the um, uh, superintendent of the Silmar District, and uh, she was sitting on, a, on another board uh, for the CSBA, which was just extremely impressive. And I was very flattered that the, the community uh, input and my, my volunteerism, and um, that I was chosen for that spot. I, I never thought I could beat her. Um, so, I think that, uh, you know, I, I certainly remember Lee helping me at the time and, uh, you know, talking to the board members just like you guys came up and, and did tonight, the, the two speakers, and I've never forgotten that, Lee, thank you for that. And uh, it's been an honor to serve, and I subsequently went through a couple of elections. So, um, the way I approach this is I want to approach it in a way that I would be satisfied, if I knew all the details of how the decision was made, and I, I was okay with that being applied to my selection, um, you know, um, nine years ago. So, yeah, nine years ago. Um, I think that you all performed just about, certainly, all performed in an excellent fashion in, in your oral interview here. I went by what you wrote. I, for one person, I'm just speaking for me, went by what you guys wrote in your application, and I applied a numerical system to it of one to three for each of your answers, which I felt which was the strongest answer to that question, not between one another. I did not compare answers. So let's say if the question, you know, there was in your application, there's a total of uh, nine questions, so each question I give from one to three from what I felt was the strongest answer to that question and then I compared the three candidates at the end so when I applied that process when I applied that process what came out for me okay and I'm just speaking for me again was for Miss Jensen a score of 25 and for the other two candidates a score of 18 each so my choice at this point, and I'm open for, to for discussion, and, uh, and, and I'm open to having my mind changed. But based on the way I did it, which I felt was the fairest fashion, was a numerical uh, quantification of each answer. 
And like I said, it was 25 for Ms. Jensen and 18 for each of the other two candidates. And I, I think that's the fairest way that I can feel that I can do it. And I yield the floor. Yeah. Thank you, Larry. Um, first off, I went through an election. It was a month of not knowing whether I won or lost. So I, I know where you're at, and I know um, it's one of those things where you're, you're kind of bouncing back and forth, and you know, how do I feel? You want to win, you want to, and so I fully understand that. And short of Amy Frank being on the uh, applicant list, uh, shout out to Amy Frank. We were the, the, the vote getters that set records in this community, and we were able to help Donald and uh, Hillary um, get their votes, and we were happy to do that. But short of Amy sitting out here, um, I want to say that, um, first off, thank you all for applying. Thank you for taking the time to fill out the uh, applications. I, uh, through having a diverse background, can look at this, and for example, running an HOA is kind of like a school board. Uh, they're, they're putting Mickey Mouse sheets up for curtains. They got a tree I don't like. I want my brother-in-law to mow the lawn. I, you know, there's some direct uh, things here. If you're serving on a board, you understand what the nuances there and stuff is. And so the, the, the applications were excellent. Um, I want to say I fully understand five-year plans. I write one and update it every year at work. And I do that in, in a governmental agency. Um, and I understand JPAs, our city gives our school district 10.9 million every year. Wouldn't that be lovely here? Wouldn't that solve every problem you have? So I understand all those things, and they're part of normal business. And sometimes those things change, and sometimes they're on track. But any good agency has a five-year plan. So that said, I look back at my own goals. My goals for, uh, in the election book were um, to risk, to res reduce fiscal dependence on out-of-boundary charters. Um, if that becomes volatile, all these, these projects that we have our, the, the roof open on, like Acton School, like Phase 3, none of those are funded through a bond or efforts of our own. So we've got a lot of 12,000 kids out there. We don't know who they are. And so if something happens there, and that's at the whim of the legislature and all kinds of things we don't have any control over. So, how do you do that? Well, you restore the focus on local students. And, and with that comes my third goal, to restore our good name in the greater educational marketplace. Someone touched on this work. We go out there, I walked into a charter school meeting, and I announced I'm from Acton and said, yeah, I'm the reason you're having this meeting, so let's go. We need to restore our good name in the educational marketplace. It's nobody's fault. We went through an economic downturn. Uh, there were things that happened. People moved away. But kids need to go to our schools. If they're the local charter school, whatever school we have here, I want those kids here because the simple math says for every one student you lose, you have to sponsor 28 charter students somewhere else at 3%. And so I personally, want to see some diversity on this board, number one. I think we all know what diversity means, looking at what we're seeing up here. Number two, I need this superintendent to be supported in educational avenues that us, we don't understand. I don't think there's tree work involved. I don't think there's got a municipal bureaucracy involved. But he's gonna come forward to us and say, to meet your goals, Mr. Falls, you have my goal for him and how I'm going to rate him is if our ADA goes up. It's that simple. Okay. So I need something right now that's going to make our ADA go up. I can think of other things that I would follow after that, but I think the educational candidate is my first choice right now, with no disrespect to the other two fine candidates. So my pick would be Ms. Jensen. Um, I'll listen to you. Okay. Let's let Grab his medicine. Question is everybody comfortable with caring for us about Larry? Um, so I'm I'm torn. We have three candidates, um, all willing to help. That's wonderful. Slightly different strengths and amongst them. I wouldn't say any weaknesses. 
Uh, Mr. Wessel brings with him the, the strength of uh, his management experience uh, and uh, some of the construction experience. Miss um, Jensen uh, brings with her the experience of actually being an educator, which the board doesn't have on it right now. Um, first with a classroom teacher and then up through administration. And uh, Miss Costin has, uh, brings with her the strength of uh, knowing intimately one of our partner schools, but not, not just that, because that's not really, that's not fair. Ms. Costin uh, has also been um, tirelessly volunteering uh, and working with the other schools in the district, Meadowlark, ASMO, um, through for, for many years. Um, and so I, I think she knows the parent community very, very well, and I think that she also um, uh, has shown a devotion with, with time through this whole period. And when I step back from all that at this point in time, um, Mr. Wessel, run against me. <laughs> um, you and I have the same, really the same background. Um, and, and I'm on the board because at that time, um, you know, that was the background of, the, of both candidates. At this point in time, I'm, I'm torn mostly between Ms. Jensen because of her educational experience, and I think that that would be an asset to the board, and um, Ms. Costin. Uh, because of her untiring devotion to the district, uh, and and that means a tremendous amount to me. You know, not just to want to help. Um, you know, when there's a spot available, which which was me. Uh, but but frankly, having helped for years uh, with very deep roots um, in the student population currently, um, which, which, which helps with uh, communication with the stakeholders. Um, so, that's, so I'm listening to you guys, frankly, because unlike many of my votes where I'm trying to sway you guys, I'm, I'm waiting to be swayed <laughs> um, because the, the pool is so good and, and I, we, can't, we can't do wrong here, it's just a degree of, of, of rightness. Uh, I'm curious what you what you think, Larry. Are you finished? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Mike, I think that's a sign of a good leader that you consult with your board members. Thank you. I don't like the position that I'm put in, in, in most respects, but I do like it in the respect that we don't have three bad candidates that we have to pick which is the, the best of the worst. It's just the opposite. So it's better than last year. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if I will say it's better than last year. It's the people should have been making all these decisions that, of the, these three people if they had all three ran. The reason I've been here 10 years, and this is probably going to explain why I'm leaning the way I am, is I have not been happy with public education system. Since I was barely past being a teenager, when I had a daughter who is now a school teacher, chair of the math department at Saugus High School, very much into education, and a son, and did not like the treatment I was getting from the public education system, and ended up paying for private education and, of course, paying public taxes for it also. So I came into this kicking and screaming when I was unhappy with what was going on here in Acton and Albuquerque when they closed Acton School. That got me two years fighting where these people are sitting. At the same time, being on the facilities committee to try to help be part of the correction and then eventually elected to the board, and now in my third term. So, I don't follow the idea that the educator is what's best to be on the board 
to govern what happens in our district. I think we have a mixture, a whole difference of opinions, the best will come out. And since I'm from an er era, an area, and opinion that um, choice is extremely important, that means I lean more toward the charter system and freedom of choice, whether even though it may have lots of problems, lots of supervision, lots of uh, other things we have to do to make that choice, number one, proper for the kids, and number two, available for the kids. You all know I go to CSBA. I've been there, except I think two years, every year for the last 10 years. That does not mean I believe with everything that CSBA believes in. That we should have a board of five people decide something in a closed room, fight it all out, have differences of opinion, and then come out and be all five as if there's no problem to everybody. I don't, that's a CSBA rule of governing, but I don't believe in that. So without belaboring this too much, and without wanting any one of the candidates to feel bad because it's like three perfect candidates, if I have to choose what I would love to see a unanimous decision, but it's obvious now it wouldn't be, I would vote for Tracy Costin because she fits my bill the most, for me personally, right or wrong. And that's because you, your perception you have that she's more for school choice than the other more, candidates? I think she's more prone toward my belief of governing our district the way it should be governed, not just pro-choice, that the, the kids first, the safety of the kids. Uh, we've had so many danger problems here. Uh, back when my grandkids were here, I'm trying to think if it, no, it didn't go back to my kids. When I had to go pick up kids at Meadowlark, and I went through all of the problems we've had, I'm just saying I believe she fits in more into where I believe she would be not just following my view on the board, but would be more in line with what I think is best for our kids. Because as I, you guys all know, I can make an enemy of it, any of you in a snap of the finger. Not an enemy enemy, but you know what I mean, a, a disagreement. And uh, I can't be cubbyhole. I'm not a Democrat or a Republican uh, person that, that has to be that way. Uh, I, I, I can make a liberal hate me, and I, make, I can make a conservative hate me more. Larry, just so I understand, it, um, is your criteria the person, just so I understand, uh, is your criteria the person that mostly matches your ideology in regard to education, or is it the best person qualified for a seat on the board? Well, I don't see how those are different. Well, but that you're definitely right on both of them. The, that idea, ideology is what I believe I would vote for a person, and it's great that I won't be unhappy no matter who sits up here of the three of you. And uh, that, so I think I've kind of given my view, and, uh, and I also take back anything I was saying about worrying about the proper decision coming out. You are 100% correct. It, it's being aired out, and uh, it, it is not inherently flawed. <laughs> yeah, just so I, I, I want to clarify that I, I do not know any of the three people's positions politically or about any issues. We are completely committed to the five-year plan. We're completely committed to the safe routes to school. Um, as far as the joint use agreement goes, you know, that's something, when I look at that as a board member, it's going to come to program, it's going to come to scheduling issues, it's going to come to maintenance. And, you know, the community has to be involved in that. Our community, we're going to pull the community on the calendar. We're going to certainly pull the community on joint use all due respect to everyone that's seeking that. 
So if the community wants that, I'm all for it. And if I were being asked as one of the community members, I'd say absolutely I want it. But I want to involve the community in that process. And like I said, it's going to come to program, it's going to come to scheduling, it's going to come to maintenance in regard to that. Um, as a, and I was also a town council member, Acton Town Council is pursuing this, and we are as board members pursuing the um, safe routes to school. That's a top priority. But you know, I'm myself a conservative Republican. I'm not in any way aligning myself, you know, politically or the way that uh, you know Larry explained with it with anyone in my ideology. I just simply went by who I feel is the most qualified, and I think few people could make the case honestly. Okay, few people could make the case honestly that anyone is more qualified than Mrs. Jensen. So that's. How I feel, and that's who I vote for. So, and it's very difficult for me. Because, <coughs> I'm, I'm still struggling with this. Um, qualification doesn't just necessarily imply that you're in the business. No, of course not. Right. No, it's the answer, answer to nine questions. The qualification includes uh, commitment. Time, track record. Well, I remember. And that's going, why this is so hard. I remember <laughs> going back. Listen, I remember going back. I asked about uh, uh, Miss Jensen because I needed to get to know her better, and I know the other two candidates well already. My neighbor Bob Maluski, um, his wife, who the high school library is named after, worked with her on the bond. She's put four kids through the school. And you know she's working the bond four times. It's not you know just at this moment. If if that's a qualifying factor in that area, she's got that. And she's got she puts four kids to our district. She worked on the bond. We have the high school partially thanks to her. So uh, amongst many others. Amongst your, many your other. Point, your point was taken. Okay. Your so point. so if that was that that was a huge thing to me. Your point's taken. Okay. And that's coming from the horse's mouth. One of the people that like like I said, we named the library after. Uh, I, I understand. Your point is. That's just how I all opposed it. Well, so I suppose it kind of comes down to me. Um, this happened to me just just a couple months ago when I went for a promotion at work. I wasn't selected, and I wasn't selected. And when I and I asked why, they said, "Well, there is a way for me to have my cake and eat it too." By not selecting you, I actually got the best of both candidates. As disappointing as that was for me. Which, which meant the guy was doing this calculus. He could pick the other guy and he knew I was not going anywhere. And that I would continue working in the trenches. And, you know, I am. Today. <laughs> Even though he's got the job. <laughs> That's not fair though. That's my it's dad, horrible. That is vague of you. It is horrible. <laughs> but uh, I do think we have a, an opportunity to bring on the board somebody with a lot of educational experience that can help augment a board that doesn't. And that's why I'm leaning the way I am. Um, there, but, but the thing that Ms. Cawson brings to the board is you know, she puts in the kind of time that, that we can't possibly. Mr. Testasso put in a ton of time. He was at all the PTO meetings. You're at quite a few of them. You, you well, let me retire and I'll be at every one. And, uh, <laughs> and, that, and that's, that kind of outreach is what, we're, what, what I'm about to give up here. Um, but I think today... I'm going to go with my gut, which kind of says that let's bring on the board an educator who can help us navigate part of the area that we're, we've made tremendous improvements that I don't believe we're going to backslide on. School choice is one of them. Um, professionalizing our district and putting process in place is another. But one of the places we haven't put a lot of emphasis um, is 
student performance improvement and, and staff development. I mean, we've had those kind of lagging the infrastructure. And at this point in time, where the infrastructure is still being put in place, but largely in place, there's a skill out there that, that I think maybe could help us. And that's why it's killing me to do this. And Ms. Costin, please don't back off. You're an asset to the community. You can continue to help. You can continue with the board you're on and, and making that outreach between the, the two systems that are really joint, because they're all our kids. Um, there will be other board positions opening up. Um, through, I'm disappointed a little bit that, that Ms. Frank didn't step forward, you know, because it's not try once and then don't try again. Um, In all fairness, she's a district employee now. Okay, so she can't try out. Uh, <laughs> um, but, but at any rate, that's what I, I'm imploring you. Stay involved. You're a huge asset. Oh Help me tremendously. I, I hope you can help continue with us in outreaching, um, not just not just to that particular campus, but you've done that across the school. I'm really just basing this on the kind of improvements I see us needing to embark on going forward, and the expertise of one particular candidate in that specific area. People development and hopefully score development, learning how to look at all the data that that um, Ms. David presents to us, what we can do as a board to help staff interpret that data and drive progress forward academically. <laughs> that's that's why I'm kind of leaning the way I am right now. Um, run against me or when I'm tired, I'll call you up and make sure that you're interested. Because one of the things when, once you're on the board is you feel an obligation to, feel, to see things through. You feel an obligation uh, to the staff and to the community. And, and partly because we don't always hear old candidates like this. You say, oh my gosh, if I leave, you know, what am I leaving the kids, the community, the staff with? And uh, we're lucky this time that Mark's leaving after 12 years, and we've got great candidates, but it, it's not always that way. So at any rate, so that's kind of where I'm landing. Um, Can we uh, make one more a little, little bit long-winded in imploring you to stay involved, because uh, there's, there's more spots coming, I guess. And it's not to promote one over the other. Yeah. It's just to remind all three of you. You're interested. You'll, you'll love our district. You want to get in and help. 2018 is election year. There's going to be three spots open up here. And you sign up to start the election as soon as July. You'd be at barely over Christmas time. Summer barely be getting started. You start your campaigns and we can have a real election in uh, November. And the people will decide. And no matter what, the best news is our school district isn't losing. We're winning. And then there's 2020. All right. So, so um, does somebody, based on everything that you've heard, somebody want to make a motion? I make a motion to nominate Kelly Jensen as the appointee board member. I will second that. Call the question. Aye. 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 Thank you. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Thank you both. Other candidates, so much. I'd like to make a, just a couple of closing remarks, uh, if it pleases the board president. Please. And just, a, just a couple of things I'd like to share. Um, I, my mantra is, and you'll hear me say it quite often, is uh, trust the people, trust the process. And I truly believe that, that you don't need to push or agendize things or uh, strategically maneuver things because they have a way of working themselves out. And tonight is an example of that. And I'm, truly appreciate um, everybody's role that you each played in this process. 
I want you to know that for the, the three of you, um, in this case, Ms. Jensen, that you are joining a great team. Um, in a short time, I'm very proud to say that I love working with this board. I enjoy your discussion, your input, your thoughtfulness, your deliberation, and your camaraderie. You're a great support to me. There's a very special relationship that occurs between a superintendent and the board of trustees, and you're joining that. And I look forward to establishing the same with yourself. Um, I echo Mr. Fox's comments uh, earlier in the process. Um, it's funny, we had a, 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 a candidate with board member experience, we have a candidate uh, with education professional experience, and we have a candidate with a, a Barack Obama awardee for volunteerism. So it really was a stellar pool, and I want to commend all three of you for, for stepping forward and being part of that, that process. And, and that, that's really my, uh, my comments. I appreciate everybody's time, your deliberation, and your thoughts tonight, Board. And I thought you did a, uh, a fabulous job this evening. May I make one second, please? I, uh, I just want to say this was a very difficult decision to me. Uh, and the Board is filled with difficult decisions. I've had to take disciplinary action against friends, kids. I've had to decide what to do with you know, maintaining teachers or not, furloughs, things like that. Very, very difficult decisions. The most difficult ones are the ones that have to do with disciplinary actions. So those are the ones that I would, um, Ms. Jensen, I would uh, implore you to really do some soul searching. And my highest priority in those situations is the safety of all students. My highest allegiance is to that, not that particular student. Safety of all students. And, um, this is a very difficult position to, to me, you know, um, and uh, Mr. Wessel, I, I'm, I, I, uh, I feel implored to apologize to you. I, I really feel that uh, on a personal level, my vote would have been for you. So uh, I, it's a difficult decision, and, uh, you know, I have to feel like what, who is the person most qualified putting their hat in the ring. That's what I want by. So thank you to all three of you. Um, last comment in all seriousness, Ms. Costa. Um, I am highly disappointed that my daughter attended an Einstein campus for four years and it fell apart in her senior year. She's happy here, she's doing well here, but that was not her dream. And I look at partisan politics and school, two school districts fighting with each other, and I still have a place in my heart for that campus over there. And the last thing I want for it to do is fall apart and shuffle someone else in here and, and give the message up to Agudol say that, okay, well, if it's not this one, then it's that one, and you know, you're just, you're just second fiddle. And I think that you're the glue that will ultimately keep that together, and I'm speaking to you personally. So please do everything you can to keep that board together and on the right track. So, so we're not, you know, I hear out, uh, the partisan stuff just bugs me. Just make it happen walk it through and know that you you have my support and I hope the other, other board members as well. You play a critical role right now that I'm not sure anyone else can play. All right. Mr. Wessel, if I were looking for a, for a facilities guy, <laughs> you'd be it. And that's what I'm going to be looking for next. Good. So somebody get me out of this chair and put somebody else up here in the next election. My work may be almost done anyway, so thank you all. Item 5.1, the special board meeting of the Board of Trustees is adjourned at 7.45 p.m. Do I have a motion? So moved, Mr. President. Second. Okay. Ball scrap, call the question. Aye. 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 Okay, everybody, thank you very, very much.